Got speed. Got What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Terrence Green here with Black Tree TV. About to get an ill haircut, line up, talk that good old barbershop talk like we do everywhere else in the world. You already know. Yeah. In every neighborhood, there's a place folks get together to talk about their dreams, to share their frustrations, and maybe even tell a joke or two. Excuse me, but I don't like to get involved in petty arguments. Yeah, you do. That's primarily what you yeah, do. Yeah, that's pretty much all you do. <laughs> <laughs> It's a home away from home. Turn that up! And these aren't just friends. Come here, girl. They're family. Check her out. Oh, there is a guy. Send me there. The only man that you can trust is the one up above. Each one of y'all want a super thug that's got three degrees from Harvard. Meanwhile, you pass up corny dudes like Gerard every day. Don't no woman want no moist Duncan Hines ass dude like Gerard. Guys, I'm standing right here. I can hear you. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to me, man. Uh, congrats on all the movies. They're Thank all you. great. This one in particular really touched home for me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you spent a lot of time really trying to influence the youth mm -hmm. um, because of their environment and stuff like that. And, and being one of those kids that was that kid, I felt like we never listened to, to you guys. We mm -hmm. never, no matter how much wisdom you preach on us, we don't. We always listen to our peers or we mm -hmm. listen to the people we're around. How can we influence kids by putting like better people around them or something like that, like the good kid, the good athlete or someone like that instead of the thug or something? Well, you know, I believe, you know, some are listening, some aren't. You know, I think that the kids that keep talking because you never know, you know, when you're going to plant that seed in a kid who's on the fence. Um, I think it's important to try to get to, you know, our youth young, uh, you know, before they make that decision if they want to be, you know, hardcore or want to be, you know, regular kid. And uh, so I just think we have to do those things and we have to look at the, the people we can influence in our own lives. You know, your cousin, your brothers, your nieces, your nephews, they look up to you, they watching you, they seeing everything you do. And if you come in and tell them the right thing, if you don't tolerate foolishness from them, if they know when, when you know, uncle hit the door, I gotta be right or he gonna, he gonna clown me, you know? So uh, those kind of things, I think are necessary. You know, people gotta people gotta uh, fall in line a little, a little like they used to. You know, I just bad. like I've always growing up in, in, in like a tough environment. I've always like when I would see the like negative stuff happen, I just automatically didn't want no part of it. And I would always argue with my friends and stuff and try to go left from it and influence them to do right. And I'm. I've always just wanted to be the reason to go back to my hood and be that voice, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And be, be like, listen, you don't have to go down that way. Because like I said, we don't listen to the OGs. We don't listen to them. I was just, I just want that reason. I want that, I want something to change from that. Why don't people, like to me, you were one of the smartest people in the film. You know what I mean? Right. Like you have, you've been through all the experiences, you've been through that and like you show with your attitude like, this isn't what it has to be. Why don't people listen to that? I don't understand, like, why don't they listen to that? Well, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, life life does move forward, people are, you know, we we do allow, uh, it, it's been a mistake of, you know, <clears throat> generations before, uh, especially our generation where, uh, you know, where, you know, 40s the new new 20, and you know everybody's trying to be younger than what they are and rep this this energy where people don't you know don't need to be the adult. You don't have to be the responsible one. I want to be in the club, the same club you are. I want to be, you know, you want to, you know. So your example is going to be one of these kind of things, to, you know, for you to to be a kid who looks like them, dresses like them, but also doing something smart, have ex access to guys like us. And then, you know, there you, you there you lend a little more hope. And then these are the kind of opportunities that we know that we need in our neighborhoods more so than, you know, fast money and dope money and street money. People need to know that they can believe and be be great doing other things. And, uh, you know, that, well, that'll give kids choices. But when you don't have a choice, when your leader is a year older than you, then, you know, you're going to have a lot of ill you know, advised information going around. And that's been, you know, again, from a few generations ago. So we have to continue like we wanted to do in this movie, 
like with the art start with it being art like mm -hmm. hopefully you can look at the film go and laugh and say well, you know what that was an interesting message I wasn't really expecting yeah. that and so maybe that sparks a you know the bug in some in some people and and you know we doing our little bit of part and then uh, you mm -hmm. know and, and then each person can go around and do that in their own neighborhoods hopefully I think so you playing Celebrity Bob and I'm and I, I Mr. Mom now? You're the one who said you wanted to spend more time with Maya and Kenny, so what's the problem? Sometime. Half your clients was mine to start. Oh, you complaining now? When Kenny's mom asked if he could spend the remainder of high school with us, I was cool with it. But since he's been with us, he's done nothing to help out. Yeah, come on now. It's like we have two toddlers in the house. It's a new situation. It's not no, a new it is situation. a new situation. It's, it's taking a little you time. You know how long he was his mother. I understand I know. that. All right, y'all. Yo, Kenny, you're shy. Yo. Do y'all need a minute? Cause we'll all leave. You know what? I, I'm gonna leave. It's like love and hip hop reunion in here. He look like a baby. He sure does. And, and it's cold water. I, you, <laughs> you cold water? You can't, <laughs> like y'all, you know? Terrence of Black Tree. All right. Hello. How you guys Hello. doing? Hello. All right. I'm gonna get straight to it, man. Um, the whole movie, y'all are claiming that good women are losing to Instagram. Models. All right. <laughs> These I'm glad models. you used those quotes. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's the thing. I don't really feel like good women are losing to Instagram girls. I feel like, you know, mm -hmm. we we do go a little left, but mm -hmm. like we always come back home. Mm -hmm. We always know why we come back home. Yeah. And so how how are good women losing? Um I I wouldn't say that that was I mean, I get what you're saying, but uh, I don't feel that way. I think it was not. I think that is great that it was brought up in the movie as a conversation as to things that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I think, I, yeah, like you said, I don't think good women are losing. I do. But you you're know? talking to Eve now. That, that's you a like, big you know, it's, not, it's no shortage of options. It's no shortage of options. But, this, you know, and I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, but I know a lot of amazing women, though. I do yeah. know a lot of good women who are single, who are brilliant yeah. and wonderful. I just think they, that. like, you know, you know, men are driven by that, like, that Instagram look, that little that little freak stuff that we see on the gram and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It do get us a little bit around, so we tend to like look low. But it's like, you, but how can you blame us? That's what drives us. But like in, in the movie though, but in the movie, like you had it, I felt like you had more of that like sexual appeal and then it started being more about work and stuff. So he kind of like, he lost it. You're like, her husband lost it a little bit. Like, no. don't you think there it has to be a balance? Yeah, of course it has to be a balance, but it's not a balance just on the woman. The woman, no. it needs to be a balance with the man as well. He but has he a you that. He has a responsibility. And she showed up as well. Yeah, but she wasn't home doing nothing. I mean, right. She was out she working. Was out working. She was out working, but you Which still you have to keep. Do. Yeah, but you have to keep that She offered that him that. Drive. She, yeah. she was right there like, come get it. Exactly. exactly. Well, you know, then, but exactly. You, how was it, though? It wasn't even like you was really trying to get but it. You was like, come he on. Felt, he felt oh emotionally ignored. Yeah, and the needed, truth it is, was more emotional. Men, women have dealt with that for years. I mean, ever. Decades. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional. yeah. No, no, we felt with emotional, we dealt with emotional neglect. Right. While men have, are out working and providing. And providing. <laughs> right. But you're yeah. right, there has to be balance on both parts. But mm -hmm. that is, that that has been an issue when there's someone who works the most. But women have dealt with it too. Yeah, that's I true. Just like, that's I, true. I, I would just like for my businesswoman to come home and like rip it off and then be okay. the, the Instagram girl. Like, mm -hmm. you want it all. Yeah, she's got to be the Instagram girl. And how much are you giving up? I'm doing yeah. both. I'm just saying. Like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I am. I am. If I'm, a, if I'm the Instagram I'm like, girl, I'm not working. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, that takes that's a lot of time. Yeah, the, 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 that gotta, takes a lot of time. If I got to go see, do hair, makeup, heels, I can't things. work. There's too many things. Yeah. There's too much. I can't come home from work and rip it off. Yeah. I got to be home all day. Right. <laughs> so that when you get home from work, I can rip it off. Right. That's right. That's a, you know what? That's, that's a good, good way to put it. Yeah. So just a little bit half and half, but still. It's like... 80, 20. 80, 20? Yeah. yeah like, I'm only doing non-profit work. <laughs> right. At that point. <laughs> I gotta go. That was good. Hey, it's Terrence Green with Black Tree TV. About to get this good old haircut. Yes, sir. From the, the dope barbers. From where? Where you guys from again? Blog Barbershop. Blog Barbershop, man. I'm about to get right, man. So how, all right. Were you influenced by being a barber or the lifestyle of barbering, if that makes sense? Like, were you, did you go to the shops as a kid and you're like, hey, I like it here? Absolutely, my, my cousin cut my hair from inside home. And to me, I thought he was the flyest dude ever. He had money, he knew everybody, so 
Once I saw that, I was like, that's for me. Being my own boss, that's where I'm at with mine. So how, I, <laughs> this is everyone's saying. I think at one point, every like cool dude wants to be a barber at some point or like have that, be able to cut their own hair until they mess it up, until they chop it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you why, I had braids. So I had the braids with the little Omarion okay, hair. Okay, okay, the, the baby hair. Right. The baby hair, I did the baby, baby, I did the baby okay. hair thing, oh, right? Man. Until I yank one time, that's all I needed. That's all I needed. How, how you go past that? Cause I know you dinged yourself before. Oh, absolutely, you gonna, you gonna, you gonna get a bad cut, especially for yourself. But, how do you but that's when the it? lesson, you let it grow, you gotta go, we call it murder one. <laughs> That's okay. when you go, that's murder one. Gotta get you one of these. You know oh, saying? nah. It's, it's, a re, it's a reset. One it's an absolute yeah. reset. But you, I, as a young boy, you can't have a reset. You can't go to school with a reset? Yeah, that's when you stay home. Really? <laughs> Most moms let you stay home. Most parents let you stay home a day or two to get at least a little a little scrub. Yeah, y'all y'all got like barbershop rules? Like, is it like y'all just go for it in the shop? Is y'all shop pretty much? Open uh, like as far as joking and clowning. Joking and clowning. Oh, y'all, y'all the gloves fight, are off. Yeah. The so gloves come to the door. Either you gonna be able to take it and dish it, or it's not the spot for you. Right. I, I, hey, L oh, not. Nah, this is what I wanna talk about. This is this means something <laughs> to me. Hey, check it out. Check it out. Y'all gonna hate this. Hey, all right. So, what's the average price for a shape up? Shape up. Shape up. Shape up. Shape up. Like a lineup. A lineup. A lineup. We call that frame. We call it a frame. That's a okay, frame. a frame. Uh, for just the hair, just the hair, no beard, is ten dollar frame. Ten dollar frame. All right. You ever try to get somebody to get the frame and they say, "Hey, can you like just fade the side a little?" All the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Hey, hold all up. the time. Look, can you blame us though? Cause we don't think it's really a haircut if you just, you know what I mean, right here. Right, right. Yeah, but it still, it still takes time. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. on the handoff. Yeah. Since hand we're speaking, speaking in terms of y'all, the hand handoff is always so light. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's no extra incentive to get that. Just could you get your boy right here? Just get you there. No, let's right, right. get you right here. Cuts calls. Yeah, we man. feel like a haircut is when you start diving in here. My barber said, the moment I adjust my blade is no longer a hairline. That's real. That makes perfect sense. If you sense. pull out any clipper other than the liners, this one, uh -huh. this one or this one, these are liners. Uh -huh. Liners. <laughs> these are what you pay $10 liners. Cool. Yeah. You anytime, lie. anytime you need a brother got to pull this out, <laughs> flip it around so you can see. Adjust the anytime blade. You, you gotta adjust that? the blade. That <laughs> means that, mean that's adjustment on the price. <laughs> yeah. See that? Yeah, it just, it, the price. Man, is just we can't get adjustment. away. See, I done told how to get away with the with the pricing. I used, I got my barber like twice, and I think the only reason I got away with it was because I'm his homie. That's yeah. true. Because I immediately was like, hey, can you just just get this little? It's a little thick right yeah, in here, real quick. And you, I could tell because he was like. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I he, used the friendship card, I think. Because right, right. he got somebody else waiting. He got, yeah. he got to eat, you know? And when you did the handoff, we called the handoff the money exchange. The money exchange? Yeah, yeah. Was there the any extra in the handoff? Was it a tip? To be honest with you? No, please be no, honest. No, please oh, be honest, no. There was no, there wasn't no extra in the handoff. Oh. The reason why I got the lineup was because I wasn't really trying to drop 25. So I was just like, maybe if I get a lineup and oh. sneak in a little slum, oh, I can get away with a yeah. semi-looking cut. That's a violation. It's a violation. That was just bad, I mean, yeah. bad client we, etiquette. We professionals. But when you, when you, I will say this though, when you did say like the handoff, did I show him love? That's where I feel like now I feel like I was wrong. Cause I didn't think about that then. Cause he did, he, he took a second to be like, you know what, let me do some extra for him real quick. I should have. That's right. You know what, that's, that's a good, that's an even exchange. When you go to work and clock in, your supervisor come around and say, hey, do you mind staying an extra hour over? At the end of the week, you oh, want to see an extra that. hour right. worth of uh, <laughs> money on the yeah, check, right? right. You same know what? Thing. That's the got, same thing. Now I feel bad because I felt like I got over on my barber. Right. Hello, everyone. How you guys doing? All right. Question, man. You were like the like, neighborhood hustler. You know what I mean? Yes. Every neighborhood has one. Why don't the neighborhood hustlers ever try to like expand? You had something brilliant. Like, why do they never expand? Why do they always keep it? Uh, because of characters like uh, Rashad always hating on. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what, yeah. It, it, that, that's, I mean, but but how can you really expand? I, I will give you this: when you're exploiting your own community. 
expect you, you know, had how can a you girlfriend. That? Well, everyone gets exploited in some way, shape. Okay. There's always gonna be someone trying to knock you down. Yeah. But you had something golden. The food was bomb. Everyone loved Thank it. you. Why not? Why not Thank try you. to like? Who said the food was bomb? Everybody you but you. Did, you. did you see how many people he had to have working for him? That's supply and demand. The, 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 the one getting paid. The difference between, between me and you, barbershop four, is all about the expansion of my business. <laughs> just so you. Know. I was just always curious as a kid because the, the neighborhood hustlers always like had everything we needed, and I'm like, right. you know, you can go beyond that. You can go further. Yeah. That's that's all. Was just curious. Now, this one. But, What's up? I gotta say that somebody said something to me like a long time ago. Like, man, a lot of hustlers, they know if they was in corporate America would be True. CEOs, obviously. Like, but I mean, sometimes just the opportunity ain't like, like, what, what, in all reality, if JD went to, went to go try to get a job after being locked up, how many people gonna give him a job or he came with his business idea? But he you had know? already had a good clientele base. That's the only thing that had. He had. He had. I mean, I would have I I would have wanted JD to get a, a good job too. As long as he wasn't exploiting the people, I'm cool with it. Right, Joey, what's, <laughs> what's going on, hungry black folks? Huh? Who wants some non profit gangster grub? All right, soul food to save food soul. Every delicious piece of beef helps keep a bullet off the street. I know that's right, because that who smoked your okra was popping in one fleek last time. Okay, you go did, she, did she just say fleek? Don't don't just make up words, right? There's a whole dictionary full of words. Okay, it's a library down the street, Wilson Dictionary. Go in there and flip through it. You won't see fleek in there nowhere. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. I got some don't be so mean greens in there for you today, too. You're gonna love it. It's so good. I just think um barbershop just always felt very real. And um something about ice cube just always brings things home for me, and I know for most people. I think everyone feels like they know someone like him. Like, you know, Calvin is someone, it's e either your brother, it's a hardworking cousin or uncle or father or someone that is from the hood but wants to get out the hood, that thinks, you know, there's a better life here, you know, somewhere for his children. All right, I, I'm gonna say this one thing, and I know y'all not gonna tell yourself, but I was listening in the barbershop the other day, mm -hmm. and one of my homeboys said, that his client was really like rude. Like the whole time he just had, I don't know, just, I don't know how you can be rude in a chair, but I felt like I believed him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he was doing some asshole stuff or whatever. He said he pushed him back on purpose. Pushed his no. mind back? He no. pushed his mind yeah, back. We don't no, do that's that. violent. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's not cool. you, you marketing yourself. Right. The thing is somebody's gonna ask who pushed you back. So regardless if you think you're getting over somebody by pushing them back, you lost. you're still advertising yeah. yourself. True. So it's, 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 that's no good. That's a, that's a thumbs down situation. That is dope, man. Hey, what would y'all say the, 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 the environment in y'all shop is like? Everyone's shop is different. I know it's, I know it's open, talking and stuff it's, like that. It's really just, just like this, except more people, more, more conversations. Yeah, it's just about the people. The walls don't matter. It's the, the people that are within the walls. How do you, besides word of mouth or something like that, how, how can barbers, like, really get out there? Like, how, how do you get... There's nothing better than a fresh haircut. So it's just that make sure you on. do fresh cuts and it'll come across. Because you're right, because people do ask me who cut, who cut me. Right. You know what I'm saying? It could be good, could be bad. You never know, right. you know what I mean? But what? Okay, what are your, what are y'all like barber goals? Like what, what, what makes you sleep good at night? B besides like the good haircut, like is it the reaction, or is it your reaction to a cut? You know Always what I mean? Always the reaction because you can see a good haircut will inspire somebody for a little bit. You know what I mean? Until it's time to come back and get inspired again by a cut. They feel ready. You know what I mean? To see somebody jump out the chair and be like, man, it's on tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get 15 numbers or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get a job. Cause y'all are responsible where, for who we go at. home with that night. And we right. know yeah. that, <laughs> we, we, we understand that. We, we're also responsible for that job and, and how true. you represent yourself. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, certain people like a certain caliber of shoe. Some people feel like Jays, you got the Jays on you ready, but Jays don't mean more than the Watch cut. It. I see you. It wasn't on accident. It you know, wasn't he on accident. It. I thought yeah, it, was it wasn't on accident. But I see what you did. That was, that you know what I mean? You're absolutely right. That right. Does and that treatment, a lot of times, going back to the handoff, when you see somebody come in and they they obviously want some status, or they you know they care about themselves, so they're going to buy the freshest shoes, 
but when they the handoff is skinny, you're right. You can't treat your barber like that. You absolutely. You know what I mean? Right. Cause we gonna give you everything we got. Yeah, because we have. You know to. what I mean? Because we have to. Cause we're trying to do it for ourselves and for you. Y'all got wisdom. Y'all like smart barbers, bro. Oh, oh man, they, they all smart, man. Nah, man. There's a lot of our, our logo, our mission statement at our barber shop. We call ourselves Blog. That's an acronym for Barber Lounge of Gentlemen. Mm. Highlight it, emphasize. Our mission statement is to change lives one cut at a time. You know what I'm saying? That's if your life is good, we want to push you to be better. We want to change your life to, to push you to greatness. If you down and hurting or whatever, or introvert, we want to pull you out of that. We want to change your life. Every haircut, we want your life to change. And we want you to change other people's lives that's in the environment. That's so real, man. I have nothing but respect yeah. for that, man. Hey, this, this is the one other, I think, pet peeve that I get my barber on a lot of times. It just made me think of it right now. Every time, I only go to my barber for, like, emergencies. You know what I'm saying? And it's usually auditions. You know, so I always get a chair, but hey, man, it's the biggest, biggest opportunity I've ever gotten, man. I need the best haircut ever, man. Is that, is that motivation or is that more so like, oh, God, come on, bro. Again, I, I'm no, going to do that regardless. Yeah, right. don't do that. Don't, don't just don't do, do that. Because we're going to give you the business every time. Just, just it's, it's always the biggest do. thing for us. You know, our expectation for your hair is probably always bigger than yours. That's deep. You know what I mean? Because nice. cause we know it's... You know, it's, it's advertising for us. Hey, man, I just want to say, like, I love the barbershop, bro. Like, I've been a barbershop addict since I was a kid. I try to go weekly, man. It's, it really is a place of therapy, man. Like, Absolutely. So, cool. Like, I don't know what y'all go through all the time, but just know it has a really, really, really big impact on people. And Appreciate that it, time spent in there is so deep. And we, so, I know I go vent about woman problems, oh, bill yeah. problems, and stuff like that. And it, like, it always stays there. And that's what I always love. And, I even go hang out at the shop just because, you know what Absolutely. I mean? So just like, y'all have a really, really, really big impact on the world. And just talking to y'all, like people with experience and like knowledge and like wisdom, it's more than just a cut. So I like, I have a really, like a lot of respect for you guys, man. Appreciate like, it. I, I honestly man. came in here to like clown you guys and like pick <laughs> on y'all. But like, it got deep and I feel like oh, yeah. I learned something and I appreciate barbers even more. So like, your statement, what you stand for and, and what y'all are, are like pushing shows. I've only met you guys a few minutes ago and I'm thoroughly, like, I have a lot of respect Thank for you guys. Thank you, man. So it's deeper than the cut, man. Yes, Appreciate sir. it, man. Thank you, bro. Hey, man, I'm respect Terrence, man. Hey, go, go holler at them, man. Go get a cut, man. You see? Yeah. He'll get the back of your neck right. <laughs> I'd like to say something. Look, Eddie, you once said that the barbershop is the pillar of the neighborhood. Damn right. So we use that, right? We turn the shop into our safe space for the weekend, right? Neutral grounds where both sides can come together peacefully. I like that. Yeah, turn this place into Switzerland. Exactly. Ain't no way in hell the South Side is ever gonna resemble any parts of Switzerland. Look, we could try to get both sides to come together and agree to a ceasefire. And then we can get the Chicago celebs to tweet about it and talk about it, get them to support. That's good, Javon. That, that's you know good. what? He's right. That means that we have to give them something to see. Yeah, maybe we could just give away free gifts, like a radio promotion. Yes. Yeah. 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 And who's supposed to pay for these free gifts? Dre is right. We need some incentive to bring people out. Yeah. I don't want to state the obvious here, but this is a barbershop. We could just do what we already do for free. It's always hard work. You're talking about you know, being on, being in one room for three and a half to four weeks. Um, it, it's tough. You know, we're trying to get, cover everybody at the same time. We're talking 15 actors. It's, it's, it's not an easy thing, but you know, everyone makes it enjoyable because everyone's down for the same thing. You know, we also talked about just how how on point everyone needed to be, and we try to get them as engaged as humanly possible. But it all worked out, you know, kind of nicely. We were, we, were, we were all happy with it. They're, they're a group that 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 works very well together on set and when it, when it took time to be offset they were all together as well i mean nobody really went back to their trailer the uh, the chemistry with everyone was really great i noticed there was a lot of characters that you brought in that were new and left out did you uh, think of that or something like that? well you know when kenya wrote uh, kenya and tracy wrote the script you know we had you know characters that were in there that that you know some new ones that, that, that have been added and, and ones that you know didn't make the, the cut and so 
you know, I was fine with it. I thought it was a, 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 some great additions. I thought, you know, you know, the, the, the pillars that, that we had in Cedric and Ice Cube we needed to have. We love having Terry back. Um, Strong Patrick Thomas makes his cameo. Isaac does as well. Uh, Anthony Anderson is back, you know, for, he wasn't in the second one, but he's now he's in the third, but we're, we're thankful for that. And it's a great, you know, um, chance to infuse it with some new blood, you know. We've got Common, you know, who's really like the, you know, the epitome of Chicago, the, the embodiment of, of, of Chicago. Nicki Minaj, who's extremely inventive and smart and a, and a great, really good actress. Um, you know, Lamore Morris, Dion Cole, uh, Dina Hall, Margot Bingham, Utars and, and Bukar. Really, really blessed to have a really good cast. And we went through an extensive casting process and we got some really great people. Okay. We talked briefly. Well, it was more like a, 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 a text exchange, you know. Um, and uh, you know, he, he gave me his blessing. You know, he, he uh, you know uh, thought, hey, you'll, you'll do a great job. And I felt like I would too. I felt like that we, we, we had a great script, you know, with some good people coming back. And from my from my perspective, it was all about making it as as good, if not better, than the previous two. You know, it certainly had a chance to be on the on on paper. It was certainly. Could be the funniest of them, and I wanted to make sure that that happened. Right. I agree. I actually think it is the funniest one out of all of them. The uh, I think this is like the perfect closing for it because the first film seemed to deal with Calvin and his father, like that was a story. And this one deals with Calvin and his son Jalen, who shares my name. Actually, did you did you guys think of that before going into this, or you know, I, again, I, I came onto this to the script later. Like I didn't develop the script at all. I mean, you know, when I got came onto director, of course, I was developing yeah. you know quite a bit of it. But the the Jalen Calvin um, storyline is the is the emotional spot of the movie, um, and I knew that um, you know we wanted to really you know pay service to that because you know as a young man you know you're you're as you, you become a, a teenager and you come into high school you start to you know pull away from mommy and daddy and you start to you know have other influences in your life your friends you know outside forces that are like you know bigging you up and giving you props and you know you don't you, you don't think your parents know as much as they do you know it was as, as, as they as they purport to know so you know it was very important for us to display that and have that, that kind of storyline told and really it's funny when i was um thinking about it and reading the script it really made reminded me of boys in the hood you know at least the, that relationship and and um you know like in this way in some ways ice cube was taking over the um, furious styles role that Fishburne played back in Boys in the Hood. And I remember looking, you know, talking to John Singleton about that and rewatching that movie, and it was a lot, a lot more resonant with me um, this time around now that I have three boys of my own. So, yeah, it was very important for us to really make that a strong part of the storyline. If you had to pick just one scene from the film that you think, you know, summarizes the film, what scene would that be? I don't know. Maybe with the discussion about... Um, Barack Obama and being black in, in America, you know, because it, it's got it's got it's got a, a lot of um, uh, it's a hot, it's a heated debate. It is uh, it's funny, um, and it, it, it ends with a with a great laugh. Um, I'm a filmmaker myself. I was wondering if you have any advice for us other aspiring filmmakers. Uh, patience and perseverance. You know, uh, have a strong vision and stick to it. Yeah, in fact, I'm uh, I, I uh, am mentoring a number of of, 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 of uh, aspiring filmmakers, and I'm also working in conjunction with McDonald's um, and the American Black Film Festival to that are sponsoring a contest for um, filmmakers to um, get their get their uh, their voices out there. Um, it's, it's all a video competition that's about you know what you do for your community, how active are you in your, in your community. And the, the contest uh, ent for entries is uh, April 15th, the day that the barbershop comes out. So I'll be mentoring uh, three of the, um, the, the finalists for that uh, during uh, the American Black Film, Film Festival taking place in July or June. I believe it's June. Oh, okay, so that's really cool, actually. Best Man. Is there going to be any sequel? Can we expect anything? I certainly hope so. I mean, right now the, the talk is, the, the desire, I should say, is very high to do it on my part, on the actor's part, on the studio's part. It's really about scheduling. You know, many of the actors that are in Best Man are doing television shows now. Right. And so, you know, it's a matter of trying to schedule the right time, the right time slot to, to do it all. You directed one of my favorite comedies that I actually want a sequel to as well, Undercover Brother. Can we do... You want a, you want a sequel I, to the Undercover I want Brother? A sequel to Undercover Brother. Well, I don't know about that. We'll see. 
time will tell. Possibly. I don't know if Dave Chappelle's ever gonna do another movie. That's yeah, that's probably gonna be the issue there. But like I said, man, I really enjoyed the film. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you.